Hey guys, it's Brendan the Paleo Dude and welcome back to another Jurassic World figure unboxing and review. Today we'll be taking a look at the Metra Acanthosaurus from the Dino Escape lineup. Now this is a one of the figures that I have been sitting on for a while um, in terms of getting around to unboxing, but finally decided um, <laughs> I'd stop procrastinating and get this guy out of its package. Um, you can see it came in a uh, lineup with uh, Bumpy, uh, Baryonyx and Ceratosaurus, and it has three levels of um, action feature um, where you press this little thing on the back. Oh, it's a little hard. There's one, two, and three. So it just opens the mouth uh, three different degrees. <laughs> but yeah, no, the paint job is actually really nice. I like that subtle uh, sort of pinky red on the head and then this um muddy brown on the the main part of the body and then obviously a little bit of uh, beige on the neck and the lower jaw and then the back has this like very dark brown almost black um covering it so it's got a variety of like kind of earthy colors um and you can see it's somewhat similar to what we got with the um hammond collection version um, with these kind of browns and whatnot. Now they don't look too similar, but most of the Metro Acanthosaurus we um, have received in the past have been like yellow and red. So yeah, it's quite interesting. Uh, the head sculpts are very similar. Once we get it out of the package, um, I'll really show you guys the similarities there, which I think is pretty neat. It stays uh, fairly faithful to the original toy design. Though it upgrades a lot of things, like uh, the toes are very much uh, curved, the claws, you can see. Um, they curve downwards, whereas on the Hammond Collection figure, they stick forward like a normal theropod. Um, but the, the claws are kind of the same with that kind of curled look. Um, yeah, and the neck's kind of like lower down, flush with Paracerolophus holding up the camera right now. Um, my film camera actually has really bad uh, quality in this lighting and I'm not sure why. I think the direct light kind of sucks, but there we go. Um, yeah, no, so I'm using my phone camera. Uh, I think I can just pull it out like so. Plastic's pretty sharp. Ooh. So the tail actually has this kind of white, uh, opaque plastic. And you can see on the, uh, the base of the tail there, it's got some pretty uh, um, rocky, pebbly looking scales. And then these kind of larger ones overlapping that. So we'll kind of stick that in there. Snap. It's actually a fairly long tail in terms of theropods from the lineup. Uh, that's something I've always liked about this Metracanthosaurus sculpt is it has a very long tail. Um, I know when the first Metracanthosaurus figure came out in comparison to the Allosaurus, that poor Allo has just the shortest tail, but this length is fairly good because we don't get it as often as we should in the lineups. Um, for theropods, which sucks, but whatever. This guy uh, definitely doesn't suffer from short tail syndrome. Um, love the eye. The eye looks to be printed on, same with the uh, coloration around it. You can see um, the little dots. It's uh, instead of paint, like a uh, mechanical printer uh, put it on there. Um, but I don't really mind it too much. I know they've been doing that for some of the Hammond collection too, like the Concavenator. Um, which kind of sucks because it's more visible on there. But for a standard toy, um, I think that really helps capture the detail. Um, I've noticed lately they've been straying away from that. Um, I think the most notorious figure for that kind of paint job is the Dilophosaurus from the Dominion lineup. Um, the whole frill and face is all like um, printed on there. So yeah, no, the, the color on the belly doesn't go, uh, doesn't go on the belly at all, actually. It's just the kind of chin and neck area and then stops at the chest and there's no more paint underneath it. Um, I think this figure would have looked fantastic if it had um, that extra bit of paint on the stomach, um, but it is what it is. I mean, most of the paint, like always, is closer to the head region and uh, tapers before the uh, legs start. So 
Um, the sculpt itself is quite interesting compared to the um, Hammond collection figure because you can see it does not have those weird pebbly bumps and scales along the back nor does it have these kind of weird crocodilian ridges going down the tail it's kind of like this nice smooth um almost looks like a komodo dragon skin pattern on there uh, which is interesting you can see the neck though doesn't have any of that um but you can see uh the wrinkles on this guy uh, are kind of similar to the ones right here where the neck starts on uh the ball joint um but other than that that's kind of where the similarities stop uh the arms are very similar uh you can see they both curl down um they're very much like holding uh, little orbs almost in their hands and they kind of bend the same way too at the elbow same length um almost i think this figure has a little bit longer uh section here but the heads oh my goodness as much as they're completely different in detail um, you can see the similarities in the jaws, uh, the way they curve down like that, as well as the kind of boxy round head and the eye socket area being so tall. Um, now the Hammond Collection one has this little crest, whereas the mainline one has a more of a, a natural kind of um, uh, ridge right here above the eye. But you can also see that this one has a completely uh, rounded out area on the snout where this one kind of has it separated into two sections. Um, but overall, like the way the, the snout kind of curves forward um, and the bottom jaw curvature too is very similar. Um, and even this kind of back area right here that sticks out um, also sticks out there. So yeah, I, I think they... Uh, they definitely drew some inspiration from their original figure uh, when making the head sculpt, but of course this is uh, way more accurate, way more detailed in terms of the, the scales and uh, where everything's placed. But I think, yeah, it's very nice to see a um, updated version of the Metra Acanthosaurus. Um, even though it's not in the Jurassic World paint scheme, I like this. Um, I'm pretty sure the explanation for the coloration was that it's a Jurassic Park version, not the Jurassic World version, so it didn't have those flashy colors. It's more of a natural Jurassic Park-esque kind of paint job, which I totally get. It looks like it would definitely fit into the Jurassic Park uh, lineup uh, franchise uh, more than the Jurassic World version would. But this one also shares those similarities of the browner colorations. Um, so it could definitely make a great stand-in for a Jurassic Park version of the Metricanthosaurus, um, for sure. Um, it could almost be a sexual dimorphism even if you'd want to use an excuse for like photography or whatnot or, or pack building even. But yeah, um, I'm glad to finally have unboxed this figure again because I've had it for a while. So now I can finally uh, show my completed lineup for the Jurassic World Dino Escape figures. And I uh, can't wait to put it on my shelf. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little unboxing and review. Um, even though it's an old figure, I hope it was just as entertaining. And be sure to check out my other videos. I've got a few more unboxings on the way. And make sure to subscribe to uh, see everything else. Keep up to date. Um, and if you enjoyed. So I hope you guys... Uh, had a good time and I'll see you all in the next video then. Bye-bye.